Hey, I'm Nick DiMatteo, and welcome to episode number eight of Music is Everything, the other podcast. Uh, every week, I uh, discuss a topic related to music, and I quite often link it to things in real life. I try to dive deep. I begin by reading something I've written verbatim, and then I go off the cuff and kind of discuss it in further detail. And I always welcome your comments, whether you agree or disagree. If you like what you uh, are hearing and watching, please take a moment to subscribe to my YouTube page. Every week, I uh, release uh, two podcasts and usually two live concerts. Uh, so you're getting new videos every single week and subscribing is a great way to know when they're coming. Uh, also sharing, if you like any of the videos that you uh, are have seen here on my site and think someone else might be interested in the topic as well or in the music that I'm playing in my concerts or any of the recorded music with my band Rec, please share as well. And yes, please subscribe and thank you. And let's get to this week's topic. All music. Let's do that again because I want to emphasize this. All music is black music. A few weeks ago, I did two Facebook Live concert tributes to Black Music Month. I did my best to represent lots of styles and eras and to showcase both famous and lesser known acts. During the first concert, I made what I consider to be a boldly factual statement. All music is black music. What? How can that be? What does that actually mean? It doesn't mean that all music has been created or performed by black artists. It doesn't even mean that all music was invented by black artists. And in fact, I'm not even talking about all music ever. But, and this is a big one, I am talking about all music from the modern era. I'm talking about any music created in the last, let's say, 140 years. A very inaccurate number, but close enough for argument's sake. Let me restate that. All music that anyone has ever written, performed, produced since the mid to late 1800s owes its existence to black music and black artists. No exceptions, no qualifications. Let's get the easy ones out of the way first. Every single song of every genre that has ever been streamed or downloaded or played on the radio since, well, the invention of the radio, owes a debt to black music. Here's a pitifully short list of music styles that would not exist without black music influence, if not outright involvement and invention. Country, blues, jazz, rock, pop, dance, disco, techno, acapella, heavy metal, funk, hip hop. What about modern classical music, instrumental and soundtrack music? Yes, yes, and yes. What about the thing that just popped into your head that I neglected to mention? Yes. Now, those easy ones are easy for two reasons. One, there's documentation that proves how all of those styles were either invented by black artists or were adopted and, yes, also, also often co-opted by white artists directly influenced by earlier black music. And two, you can freaking hear it. As to that second point, I'm going to flesh it out in the context of the second list above. We already know that lots of people inaccurately consider country and rock music to be white music. The more we listen and learn, the more we know that's about as far from the truth as you can get. What we also know is that lots of people consider high art forms of music, a designation I think means nothing, but I'm using it as an expedient, to be white music, and they don't think they're wrong about that. But they are. If a modern musical work contains any of the following, it's absolutely been influenced by black music. Dissonance, syncopation, repetition, vocal inflections such as rubato or wailing, telling real stories with real emotion about real life. Yes, all of those things existed before the 20th century in one way or another, but not in the way 
they've been used in the last, what arbitrary number did I use? 140 years. There's one more way to show all the above is true. Go back in history and read criticisms of various singers, songs, musicians through that entire period. There were times when those critics called a certain music too black, or even worse, they used any number of worse descriptions. When we listen to almost all of that older music today, most of us would not consider what we hear to have uh, a strictly black sound. In fact, most of it sounds painfully stilted and white. Part of that is because we are again creating divisions that don't really exist, like genres. Part of that is because what's happened since has taken those ideas so much further that the older music pales in comparison. In other words, our perception of what something is or should be classified as is heavily influenced by our own experience and awareness, which in turn are heavily influenced by the times we live in and what came before. Two main points of all this being one, we should always give credit where credit is due and be open to revising our notion of who deserves credit for what. And two, every piece of music, everything and person for that matter are all connected. Lines and divisions and borders only exist because we want them to. When we start to see the infinite connections, all that gets blurred until it's just not there anymore and what's left is us, and what we do for each other. You know, I know this is somewhat timely, right? But um, I started this whole idea of music is not a genre three or four years ago. Uh, and I'm really just getting around to fully launching the entire concept. It's generated um, several EPs from my band and, and other bands I'm working with uh, and and, uh, and soon to be a full length album as well by my band Wreck. And what it's also generated is a lot of thought on what that actually means, right? So I think this idea that all music is black music is part of that idea that music is not a genre. And in fact, there are a lot of artists today who are quite successful who are calling for an end to genres on the whole. And, and I, I think they don't just mean us talking about music and saying this is of a certain genre they are very specifically as well talking about things like the grammys or um places that sell music uh, businesses and things like that 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 kind of distinction should be done away with completely because it kind of it it, it restricts the idea of what music should be but it also in in many ways uh, ghettoizes certain types of music and people who might otherwise really love the music are going to prejudge it based on what genre that it, it that it is put in, um, but let's get back to the, this idea that all you know all music is black music. We know one thing for sure. We 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 you know I've talked about this before. People way smarter than than me and way more informed have talked about this to, until you know they're blue in the face, and that is so much black music in history has been co opted by white artists, by the uh, record companies themselves, by, you know, just keep adding to that list. And in more especially in the earlier years, but I'm sure still to some degree today, those artists were never given credit, barely made any money, maybe times no money at all. And so in a sense, it was kind of like outright theft, right? But there's two points to that, and I think I might have touched on this in a different podcast. There's the business aspect, and there's the kind of, you know, uh, raping of a culture aspect, which is disgusting. All of that is disgusting, and it's, I think, the genre is a sort of a, the great, 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 you know, grand uh, child of that concept. Um, but there's also the musicians themselves, and there were some cases, no question, that uh, white musicians would take music uh, made by uh, people of color, another culture, however you want to state it, and just outright rip it off and not care that they ripped it off and not give any credit. 
Uh, most musicians I know, most musicians that even my father knew, and, and you know, many, many, many famous musicians and even lesser known musicians have stated very emphatically the, the influence that, that uh, black music has had on their music. I mean, you can't, you cannot shake a stick at the integrity that the Beastie Boys, uh, you know, grew into in over their career, and how much credit they gave to where they came from, and why they do the music they do, and the people they worked with, and the, you know, and they put their money where their mouth is, which I think is a hugely important thing. Uh, you know, in in the era right now, Black Lives Matter, which I hope is an era that continues forever, um, for as long and 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 that change happens, you know incrementally every single step of the way um, the Beatles have come out and saying how you know much they support how they wouldn't play to segregated audiences for example but they've always been vocal about how black artists of you know like little Richard especially for Paul McCartney have influenced what they do um, and with the recent death of little Richard that's one of the reasons why I think he's been mentioned um, you know, so a lot of the musicians themselves will acknowledge this. Some of those musicians took it a step further and put their money where their mouth is and tried to, you know, support and lift up black artists or at least the music if, let's say, that artist was no longer working or dead or what have you and maybe give money to the artist's estate and things like that. Um, I'm positive there are other musicians who, again, didn't do that and didn't care. Uh, but, the, but the point being... Whether you are dealing with that group of musicians or the or the ones who are acknowledging the debt, there is you know there is no question, in in my mind, that uh, you know all of this music stems from black music of some kind. Um, I in fact recently read that they talk about how you know the development of country music and stuff like that in the early part of the last century, and um, the thing is. You know, again, we, so many of us mistakenly think of that as, you know, white domain music. And that's partly because the industry uh, didn't support a lot of, you know, black country music artists like Charlie Pride, for example. And he was one of the more famous ones. But, you know, uh, it's great to see more black country artists coming out now, like uh, Breland and Lil Nas X. And I just read of another a woman, I believe, I forget her name. Uh, but I'm sure you can find it for me. Thank you. Um, and that's wonderful to see. And hopefully the industry will change along with that. But yeah, there are certain genres that are painfully slow and accepting. You, you know, heavy metal has had, and, and, and punk and rock, there have been so many black artists who, who have contributed to those styles of music. And I, yeah, I'm using genre terms. It's, it's it, again, it's an expedient, but you, you understand what I'm saying. Um, they were considered crossover acts or whatever you want to, however you want to describe them, just simply because of their heritage, right? The color of their skin. When there's a chance that you could listen to, let's say, a Charlie Pride record or, uh, you know, a Bad Brains record, have no idea what the color of the person's skin was if you didn't know the song, didn't know the artist. You know, and the point being, again, all this music is connected you know, genres and labels of any kind, such as, you know, labels for what a person looks like or where they come from, uh, are uh, very restrictive and really only important if that person or artist themselves wants to be called that. That's it. That's the only reason why a label should exist, is if that person or that artist that, you know, is doing that type of music wants to be called that, right? So, um... I'm looking at my notes here, and I mean, they, yeah, I mean that kind of that kind of sums it up. And I do really believe, I think, one final point that if if you were to listen, go back and research, you know, look on the online and say, you know, type in something about uh, you know, critic song 1920s that said it was too black or whatever word they were using at the time. You find that song and then listen to it, and you tell me how that sounds, you know, and 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 how. Uh, each era, thankfully, we're kind of opening up our ideas of what a type of music can be and what a, what a type of art, what type of music any artist can do. But we're still learning. I'm still learning. There's still things that that uh, are you know kind of thrown in my face, or I say, oh man, I should have seen that. You know, I should have been open to that. And I think it's important to acknowledge that we are all kind of taking this journey together and understanding that if you think 
okay, now I got it and I know, then you're way further from the truth than you realize and way further from enlightenment than you realize. And uh, that goes not just for this topic of music and all music being black music, but pretty much anything uh, socially, politically, uh, you know, culturally. Uh, as always, thank you for watching, thank you for listening, thank you for commenting below, reading uh, the script that I just read uh, earlier on. Uh, I want to hear from you because my objective, as always, is conversation and connection. And as part of that connection, please don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again, and I will see you next week.